he's gone now. He's no longer in this world. But uh, he would not let me do it. And it was like, Why? please don't even go there. It was, it still like eats me up when I think about it. What is one of your pet peeves? Ooh, okay. I'm big on time management. It makes me crazy. The thing that I think I could divorce my husband over because I get so mad at him, I hate being late to an airport. That's my pet peeve, being so late to an airport that your heart is pounding because so many things can so many things can happen to you while you're at the airport and you're always better off having a little time cushion and so and you can get like an airport workout if you get there early enough you know so how so, early are we talking oh i i just want to be able to be there at least 15 minutes i want to be at my gate 15 minutes before they're boarding oh at totally least. that's yeah I, it doesn't have to be like two hours no, really oh, oh okay maybe like when they're closing the door that's when my husband comes on because he'll drop me off and then he'll go like have a meeting someplace or he'll go to the bank or whatever well, it's funny i think we there was... fight so much about this we don't go to the airport together anymore because that's what he used to do it makes me nuts I'm going to send you a clip. This was in the New York Times recently, maybe six months ago, about how lots of people are either one extreme or the other, and people have to, like, spouses have to go to the airport often. Separately. Separately. We have to go separately. Okay, because you have to do what no, you're comfortable No, seriously, with. he drops me off. He'll get his ticket. He's, like, running. He's this and that. And I'll just say, okay, fine. And I, we have clear and everything else. And, uh, you know, I just don't want to rush at the airport. Okay. What's one of the first things you do uh, when you get home from a trip? I unpack. Okay. I have to like get organized. The first thing I do when I get to a place is I have to be organized. I like to like lay things out and know where everything is and have a place for everything. And what about when you travel? What is your approach to travel, to going somewhere new? Do you plan it out in advance? I treat it like I'm on a movie shoot and I write down all the things that I'm going to have to do and I pick my outfits according to what it is I'm going to do. So I have a little notebook and I have lists and things like that. And I start collecting things. Like I'll put out a, uh, like a hand towel and I'll start taking the toiletries out because I don't want to forget. I don't want to be rushed. I've, life is so crazy and rushed anyway that if I can like sort of do things a little bit at a time so that I'm not like in panic mode. Uh-huh. And you have everything kind of in your head in a certain order, too, right? Like It just kind of lives that way. It's kind yeah. of how you live your life. It's <laughs> always been like that, so you work with it. Yeah. Okay, what is one of your guilty pleasures? Um, uh, the voice and dancing with the stars. <laughs> but those aren't really guilty. You don't have to feel They're guilty about They're kind of guilty those. pleasures, aren't they? Sort of. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, what's the last thing that you loved binging on whatever TV show? Oh, I, ju I just, I binged again on um, the uh, Kaminsky Method. Okay. Because I'm working with uh, Chuck Lorre this week, and I wanted to catch up on the ones I hadn't seen. Okay, something about Burt Reynolds, can you say? Can you tell us? The most generous person I've ever met in my life. Um, he, we had instant chemistry the day we met. It was incredible, and we just became, like, best friends, like, immediately. The night we worked together, the first time we worked together, that night he called me. He said, I want you to come down to uh, my dinner theater and do their playing our song, and I want you to be in Cannonball Run 2, and I want to work with you again. And he picked me to play his wife for four seasons on Evening Shade, and I never had an affair with him, which is probably why I got to work so often with him. <laughs> and he's just he was just always you know, gold. I mean, he's just a golden person. What do you love about people? Like, what is that thing, that golden thing that you just love in a person? Um, sense of humor, you know, which is one of the reasons I loved Bert so much. Um, definitely sense of humor and just being like real with people, you uh -huh. know, like being like a person that you feel like you can sort of, uh, you know, talk to and good listener and you're curious about and they're curious about you, the give and take. Biggest regret? Besides losing my parents? Um, well, that, yeah, that's, that's a big regret. That, yeah. that was like a huge, big regret. But it's regret. not something, but it's no. you kind of feel oh, like a regret. Big, my biggest regret? I was asked to host Saturday Night Live in the early part of my career when I was on Taxi, and I had a manager. He's gone now. He's no longer in this world. But uh, he would not let me do it. And it was like, Why? please, don't even go there. It was, it's still like eats me up when I think about it, that I was asked to do it. And uh, so you never got another chance to do it? I got offered a couple times, and they, he made me turn it down. Uh, I know. Miserable. Sickening. That's too bad. So that's I'll a always hate for sure. you for that. All right, what's one of the best, <laughs> the best decisions you ever made? 
Oh, okay. To get married in New Orleans to my first husband because I ran into my current third and final husband in a courthouse in New Orleans when I was getting my marriage license to marry my first husband. And if we had not reconnected from college, because he was my roommate's boyfriend, if we had not seen each other at that, uh, in that courthouse, we probably wouldn't be together today. Things happen just at the right time. The car in the library, just they saying. Do. That's what happens. If yeah. you want to know what the car in the library is all about, yeah. you have to listen to the full podcast. Listen to it on any podcast app or catch it on YouTube. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you. Hi, this is Mary Lou Henner, and I just talked to Kara. Oh my gosh, we got so down. She did not ask me anything that I've been asked before, and we just really, really talked. I mean, she is good, and she should win that contest. This is like my favorite podcast. Don't get mad, guys, but she's the real deal.